Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2016 Subaru Forester, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and just kind of talk about how it's gonna work with some of those accessories and a few of the things that you're gonna to need to be able to pull a trailer. So I have put a lot of trailer hitches on Subarus and it seems like a lot of our neighbors are using them to do a ton of different things. You know, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, you got some people using them for bike racks and cargo carriers, and then you got other people um, pulling small campers around or a small trailer. Then you got the people that use it for everything, having their accessory and pulling their trailer around. So for me, I would want something, uh, want a hitch that uh, would be really versatile and allow you to uh, throw whatever you want at it. And a setup like this is, is gonna allow us to do just that. Uh, it's gonna work with a ton of different things and let us get the job done. When you are ready to put a hitch on your Subaru, uh, there's a lot of different options out there. And I could see how that could get a little overwhelming and you wanna make sure to get the one that's gonna work best for you and the one that you think looks the best. And the appearance is probably one of the main uh, big differences when it comes to all those hitches. Some of them are gonna be visible, like the one we have here today, where you can see this cross tube, and other ones are gonna be more hidden, where they're tucked up a little bit tighter, and really the only thing you're gonna be able to see is a receiver tube opening. And honestly, when it comes to these Foresters, to me, it really wouldn't matter uh, in terms of the appearance goes. You know, I think the visible ones look pretty good, as well as the hidden ones. And I say that because on a Subaru, accessories just, you know, they, they take accessories well. And uh, in some cases, honestly, I think a lot of these Subarus look better with accessories on them. So uh, in terms of the appearance and everything, it's really just gonna come down to your personal preference. For those of you that are planning on using folding type of accessories, uh, I always like to mention the clearance and, and how much of it the hitch is gonna give us. And in this case, it should work out pretty well, actually, for those folding type accessories. The end of the receiver tube is gonna be almost just right behind the edge of our bumper. And what that's gonna allow you to do is take those folding type accessories, put them in that upright stored position, and not have to worry about them making contact with the back of our Forester. With this being a class three hitch, it is gonna have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. So that is a really common size and a ton of different accessories will work with it. And matter of fact, uh, I always recommend getting this two inch by two inch one. Um, it just works with a lot of things. Unless you already have the smaller inch and a quarter accessories, uh, I would definitely lean towards the size opening, regardless of what hitch you get. Um, with that said, at the end here, we're gonna have a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra strength. And it is going to use that standard 5 8 pin and clip, which this does not come included. If you need one, not a huge deal. You can always grab it here at eTrailer. And I like where it sits in relation to our safety chain openings. It's way up front here. And that's gonna give us a ton of clearance back here. And these openings are really big too. So uh, you should have no issues using pretty much any size hook that you might have. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 525 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So relatively high number, and you should be uh, able to use just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to, for example. As far as the hitch's maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 3,500 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of the trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always like to recommend, it's never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Forester can pull that much weight safely. Now why don't we go ahead and just grab a couple of measurements and that'll help us figure out what accessories to get. So I went ahead and just pulled onto flat ground here so we can get some accurate numbers. And first one we'll do is from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper. And that's gonna be right at about four inches. We kind of talked about this earlier, but you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of our bumper. Next one we'll do is from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. And that's gonna be right at 13 and a half inches. 
and you can use that to figure out what size ball mount to get if you're wanting to pull a trailer. And so if it were me, I would go with a three inch rise in the ball mount. There's one that Kurt makes that I really like. It's made from aluminum and you kind of get a, a, you know, the most bang for your buck, at least in my opinion. With that one, uh, you're going to need a ball for it as well. Chances are pretty good. You're going to need a two inch ball if you're pulling anything with this. Um, and uh, if that's your case, you want to get a ball that has a one inch shank. That way it'll work with that ball mount. And then obviously, if you're pulling a trailer, you're going to want the lights to work on it. You know, that way people around you know what's going on and you'll be safe and legal. And the wiring that we've had a ton of luck with, not only for Subarus, but just most vehicles in general, is the Takancha wiring kit. So you can grab that to uh, get all the lights powered up. But other than that, at the end of the day, good all around hitch. You know, you can use it to do a little bit of everything. And uh, my opinion, I think it's gonna look pretty good too. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad. And I'm not just saying that because I, I have done a lot of hitches and have quite a bit of experience. This one's pretty straightforward. I feel like the average person should, uh, should be able to get this job done uh, pretty easily. With that said, um, you are gonna have to enlarge a hole so there will be a little bit of grinding uh, that you're going to have to do. So I, uh, I suggest a couple of tools that will make that a little bit easier. So stick around, watch that. Hopefully it will help you uh, get you going in the right direction. But uh, other than that, why don't we go ahead, pull back into the garage, and put the hitch on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be underneath the back of our Subaru. And first thing we need to do is lower the exhaust down some. That way it will give us the room that we need to work. So before we actually lower it, I like to take a strap and just run it from side to side. That way we can kind of control how fast and how far we let the exhaust come down. To get the exhaust lowered, we're gonna have three rubber isolator hangers, just like this one here that we need to pull off. And so you can spray them down with some type of penetrating oil or even soapy water just to help lubricate everything. Then you can take a pry bar or even a, a real big screwdriver if you got one. And we're just gonna pry one end of the hanger off. Doesn't really matter which side right now, but just get that one off. The other one's gonna be located on this side of the muffler, uh, kind of towards more towards the front of our vehicle. So here's that other rubber hanger. We'll use the same uh, method to get this one removed as well. This one's a little more difficult. You just really don't have anything good to, to kind of pry against. But keep working at it and we'll eventually get it off of there. Then the last one, if we follow our exhaust pipe up towards the front, we're going to have the final one right there. And once that is separated, we can go ahead and loosen up our strap let that exhaust come down a little ways. Now we can remove our heat shield, which is this metal piece here. I want to mention too, if you have dual exhaust, you'd simply do this for the other side. In our case, we only have single exhaust, so only one we need to worry about, but this is going to be held in place with four 10 millimeter head bolts. I'll we'll go ahead and get all these pulled out. Once we get this last one, it should drop down and we can just set it off to the side for now. Now, if we look on the bottom of our frame rail, we're going to have four rubber plugs you need to pull out. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. But to get these out, you take a flat head screwdriver and just pry underneath of them. Uh, until they pop out. And we're actually going to be opening up this one a little bit larger, this one closest to the front. And the reason being is this is actually not an attachment point that we're going to be using. Um, and it's already pretty big. We're going to have to remove less material. And the reason we need to do that, because if we take our hardware, this is eventually going to go in the frame. It doesn't fit in there. And so what we're going to do is make this just big enough to be able to get these items in. So um, 
Definitely recommend using a power tool for this one. In our case, I have a grinding bit here. You can also use a step bit uh, to, to drill that out. Something along those lines. If you have to, you can use a hand file. Uh, but with that said, you know, it's gonna take you a little time. So be patient uh, with it if that's, if that's what you're doing. But, you know, you got something like this or a mechanic friend, definitely recommend using it. But that said, I'm gonna open this up and every now and again, I'll just come back and check and make sure, uh, you know, that we don't get too carried away here. Make sure our hardware will fit up in there. Well, that looks pretty good there. We'll see if the hardware fits in there. And looks like we're in the clear here. So now we can actually get that in the frame rail. And what you're gonna do is take the fish wire. We're gonna have three attachment points, these three holes. But starting with the hole closest towards the back, you're gonna take the coiled end and feed it towards the front. And we're trying to get that fish wire to come out of our hole that we enlarged. You may have to reach up in there and grab it. Careful though, if you have some sharp burrs in here, you don't wanna cut yourself, so keep that in mind. You're gonna take the coiled end, Put that spacer block over it and thread on your carriage bolt. Feed the hardware up the side of there. Until it drops down like that. And I'm gonna use that same technique and that same hardware combination to get uh, the rest of it in the frame. So once you have it all in there, it's not a bad idea either to come back, since we have some bare metal now, come back with some paint. You can use spray paint or a paint stick like this. Just put a layer over it. That way it'll help keep it protected from uh, rust and corrosion and things like that. Now at the next set of hands, you can raise our hitch into position. I'm gonna take your pull wires and run them through the corresponding holes in the hitch. It helps if you put a bend in them there, prevent them from kind of coming back out. But let's see them started. We're gonna raise this on up, hold it flat against the frame. You can remove a fish wire and we wanna get at least one nut started on each side, hand tight, so it'll hold the hitch up. You're gonna be using the flange nut to do that. Once the hitch is supporting itself, we'll remove the rest of our fish wires. And take our nuts and get those started. With these, if you're having a hard time getting it up because the bolt wants to push back through, you can just apply a little side pressure there with your finger. That'll help hold it steady and make it a little easier to get that nut started. With all the hardware in place and hand tight, now we come back with a three quarter inch socket and snug everything down. Now we need to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of our hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one of your D trailer or a lot of times, if you go to your local auto parts store, they'll have one there available to rent. Now we can raise our exhaust back up into position. 
So in case you're wondering, uh, with the hitch on, you're not going to be reinstalling that heat shield that we removed. And that's perfectly fine, but with that said, we'll just re-lubricate the hangers, pull them up into position. And with these, with these, you can kind of just line them up by hand and get them back on that way. They usually slide on pretty easy. Uh, with it supporting itself again, we'll go ahead and get rid of our strap. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2016 Subaru Forester.